let's talk about the high pressure components in a CNG fuel system. The first thing you'll see is the fill, the fill receptacle. This is where you'd hook up the high pressure fill nozzle from the CNG filling station, uh, opening the valve which would then allow the high pressure gas to flow into the lines and fill the tank. From the fill nozzle, the, uh, the gas would then travel through the, through the high pressure line into the tank, uh, effectively filling the tank with uh, high pressure natural gas. After the, after the filling is complete, the, the natural gas can then flow through the outlet line, which will go uh, down through the bottom of the bed, along the frame rail, up under the hood, which then connects to the high pressure regulator. Here we have the, uh, the CNG high pressure regulator. This is fed directly from the CNG tank. We have the, uh, the line coming in here feeding high pressure, uh, high pressure CNG directly from the tank. Now the regulator is designed to reduce the pressure from 3600 PSI, which would be tank pressure, down to about uh, 30 to 50 uh, PSI for the fuel rails. So as you see, the, the gas comes in at a high pressure, it's reduced to a lower pressure. Uh, on the regulator itself, we have a high pressure lockoff. It's a 12 volt solenoid that opens and closes based on uh, uh, when the system is ready. It'll open up, allow gas to flow through. Regulated fuel pressure will come out uh, of the regulator going over to the fuel rails which will then feed the injectors um, and allow gas to be distributed to, the, to each cylinder individually. Um, on the regulator we also have what's called the high pressure, uh, high pressure transducer also known as a manometer. Basically this is a reading tank pressure giving a feedback signal to our, our gauge inside the cab which allows you to see the, the amount of fuel you have left in the tank. Also on the regulator we're, we're reading uh, uh, engine coolant temperature because we do have water lines from the engine flowing into the regulator to warm the regulator because as the gas flows through from a high pressure to low pressure you get a freezing effect so as we as we run engine coolant through the regulator warming it up uh, effectively we're keeping the regulator from icing up and freezing which would uh, which would prevent gas from flowing through the regulator as we move down the line you see the uh, the fuel lines come over to the fuel injectors um, the fuel injectors are mounted to the engine uh, the fuel injectors individually, if you see here, you have a tube running from the fuel injector down to the intake manifold. Now we've uh, machined the intake manifold with individual injector ports going to each cylinder, which uh, distributes the gas from the, uh, from the injector itself into the intake manifold, um, which allows the gas to be, to be uh, injected into each intake runner on the manifolds, uh, uh, effectively allowing us to, uh, to have a sequential injection system as opposed to like a throttle body type. You'll also see on the back of this same fuel rail, we have what, uh, what's called a, the, the fuel rail temperature sensor. Now, just like the name states, this is giving us a uh, temperature reading on the actual fuel that's flowing through this rail. Uh, the computer needs that data to calculate the density of the gaseous fuel mixture. Now this is giving fuel rail pressure reading uh, to, the, to the pressure sensor. This is also called a MAP sensor because this reads not only gas pressure from the fuel rail, but it also reads vacuum from the engine. Um, so we're hooking up a, 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 a pressure line from the, from the fuel rail, which is, which is telling us essentially what our regulator pressure is at the fuel rail. And also we have a, a vacuum line running to any good engine vacuum source. Um, moving along to the electronic side of things, you see here we have the ECU. Uh, which we've mounted over here. Um, we have the wiring harness coming off the ECU. Now going through individual components on here, we have uh, obviously we have we have wires running to the sensors I've talked about. So we have the uh, the pre-wired plug going to the MAP sensor. Um, we have a wire uh, uh, a plug coming to the fuel rail temperature sensor. Um, the system needs to monitor. The, uh, the temperature of the gas flowing through the fuel rail. We also have here individual plugs coming out to our eight injectors. Um, now these are numbered individually, so uh, corresponding cylinders would go to the corresponding plugs on the injectors. You see we've numbered here one, three, five, seven, and two, four, six, eight respectively. Now in the wiring here we have uh, individual colors going to individual cylinders. So for example, uh, our gray would be cylinder one, yellow would be cylinder two, and so on and so forth. Uh, now each, each wire also has a solid and a stripe color. Each wire color bundle has a solid and a stripe color going to each cylinder. So when we're actually doing the wiring, we're cutting the signal to our factory injector and we're tying one wire into each side which would effectively intercept the signal 
and then send it back. This allows the, o, the, the CNG computer to control when the gasoline injectors uh, switch on and off and effectively bypass that signal to our CNG injectors, allowing it to switch back and forth between CNG and gasoline. Um, beyond that, we have our RPM wire, which is brown. All that's doing is receiving a signal from, the, from any of the ignition coils to, uh, to tell the computer what, what the engine speed is. Um, we have our, our switch power and then our main uh, constant power and ground to power up the system. Moving on to the rest of the wiring bundle here, we have our individual injectors. Now, uh, these injector wires will be tying into our gasoline factory computer. Um, we'll be receiving the signal from the, from the OEM injectors and sending that signal to our CNG computer to, be, to calculate our, our required fuel. Uh, we have two wires per injector that will be tying into the gasoline computer. We have an RPM signal. We have uh, our main power and ground to the battery. Once that's all hooked up, the system should fire up and run, uh, run amazing.